Would you mind standing to your feet? I just, I want to do something before we really jump into the word. Um, uh, this is obviously the year 2023, and I'm going to be bringing a message of just some things that I've been praying about um, as we come into the new year. Um, you know, we, can, we could do this at the beginning of every week. We could do it at the beginning of every month. But God really kind of focuses us at the beginning of every year to build hope and faith in us for what's ahead and so that we can stay focused on what he's trying to accomplish in us for this new season. And so one of the things I, I just wanted to start with is the fact that um, this is obviously the year of 2023 on the Hebraic calendar. It's 5783. And three is um, when you read biblical scholars and the understanding of the, the value of numbers in scripture, three is considered to be a perfect number. It's going to be a perfect year. <laughs> three is con considered to be a number that speaks of completion, but it's also the number that that speaks of the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's a number that speaks about fruitfulness because on the third day of creation, God raised up the, the dry land and began to produce seed-bearing trees. How many are believing that not only are you sowing seed, but you're producing seed and seeds multiply, that it's going to be a season of increase over your life and a season of fruitfulness. It's a season of generations because God identifies himself as a multi-generational God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and so wherever you are on that generational scale I think we're Isaac honey because we still got Abraham here old father Abraham here here in the house <laughs> but we've actually got four generations that worship together with the with, to, in this church on a Sunday morning four of our generations but how many believe that God wants to touch your generations amen at the beginning of this year whether it's your parents your siblings your children your grandchildren your great-grandchildren God is a God of generations but as this is the year of Holy Spirit victory I was reading the other night in John chapter 6 16, and um, Pastor Greg said it, I think, really well in prayer today. He said the last two to three weeks have been like a battle from the pit of hell. Has anybody else had some battles here at the first of the year? <laughs> we'll share a little bit about ours, but, um, but, but I just felt, thought that this would inspire us at the beginning of this year. I was reading in John chapter 16 when it talks about when Jesus says, I've got to go away so that I can then send the Holy Spirit to you because he's going to be your helper. Now, this word translated helper um, could also be translated defense attorney. Basically, it's the one that stands alongside you and stands up for you. And it's the word in the Greek, parakletos, the one that stands beside. But in the Aramaic, and I think this is very interesting, the Passion Translation always goes a in, little bit into the Aramaic. The Aramaic is the word parakleta, parakleta, and it comes from two words, par parak, which means to end, finish, or save, and leta, which means the curse. So the Holy Spirit has come to end the work of the curse, to finish every effect of the curse. How many know Jesus hung on a tree and became a curse for us? He, he assaulted hell and he broke the power of the curse. But how many understand we're still dealing with the effects of the work of the curse? And so that's why we need the Holy Ghost inside of us to bring a complete end and a complete finish to every work of the curse within our lives. Amen? And so so when I thought about this, I thought way back to Numbers chapter 23, when the, the, the king Balak, whose name means destroyer, <laughs> sounds like the devil to me, he hired this prophet named Balaam to come and curse the people of God. And here's what you remember the whole story and the donkey and the pathway and he saw the angel and the donkey talked and all that part, you know, you can go back and read that. But here's what Balaam ended up saying to Balak. I can't curse whom God has blessed. And this people cannot be cursed because the shout of the king is in their midst. 
And so right here at the beginning of this year, no matter what warfare you've gone through, I'm here to tell you the Holy Ghost lives inside of you. The Holy Ghost with his yoke-breaking, curse-destroying anointing lives on the inside of you. And our declaration is, come on, in 2023, we cannot be cursed because the shout of the king is in our midst. So let's give a shout to the Lord. Let's shout. Let's shout. Let's shout. Father, we thank you, God, for the curse-breaking anointing, the curse-destroying anointing, and the Holy Ghost rising up inside of us to put an end to every effect of the curse. In Jesus' name, turn and give your neighbor a high five and say, we've got victory in 23. Whew. Amen. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I just felt that go straight through me. Come on. So we're going to start. Um, I know that Apostle Tom ministered a couple weeks ago. Apostle Gail ministered last week. Thank you so much. Give Apostle Gail an amazing hand. Heard it. The message was great. I'm going to listen to it this week. Um, but, uh, but I'm going to kind of pick up and, and there'll be a little bit of overlap between what Apostle Tom shared and what I'm sharing. Um, but we really felt like it was important for all of us to get into and memorize and study Psalms 23 for the year 2023. Now, Psalms 23 is uniquely positioned because it is positioned between Psalms 22, which is all about the pain of the cross, it's all about the pain of God's process. When G it, it's actually prophetically uh, speaking the words that Jesus spoke when he hung on the cross when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I don't want to look for a show of hands for how many people have ever felt that. But how many know that sometimes there's pain in the process? So Psalms 22 is about that. Psalms 24 is all about victory. It says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you ancient doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. The Lord of angel armies is what the Lord of hosts actually means. So smack dab in the middle of the pain of the cross and the victory of the King of glory, Lord Sabaoth rising up for us, is Psalms 23. And I think that that's very important. So we're going to walk through some of that because I think it's important for us to tune our hearts to what the Holy Spirit is doing in us so that we are prepared for all that he wants to do through us. So it, of course it starts out, and some of you know this chapter. If you don't have it memorized, I encourage you to memorize it. But it starts out by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. And I'm not going to preach every verse, every little phrase of this, but I do want to start out by saying, I do believe that this is the time that God is drawing us into a fresh understanding of our intimate relationship with God. And God identifies himself as our shepherd. And you really don't really fully understand what that means until you go and you read John chapter 10 and you see, you see where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life. For the sheep. I mean, the shepherd loves the sheep so much. He's willing to take on the lion, to take on the bear. He's the one that's willing to take on the thief. It's in John chapter 10, verse 10, where Jesus says, listen, the thief tries to come in and tries to mess with the sheep. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I've come as your shepherd to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. He says, my sheep, in John chapter 10, verse 27, he said, my sheep hear my voice. And the voice of another, they do not hear. So can we touch our ears and thank the Lord that in this season of intimacy with our shepherd, that he is going to tune our ears so that we know the sound of his voice. Because we're truly in a voice war right now where the enemy is advancing all kinds of narratives and he's trying to bring all kinds of confusion even upon God's elect. And God is saying, listen, I want you to have your ears so tuned to my voice, so tuned to the voice of your shepherd, so tuned to the voice of your bridegroom that you're easily able to recognize any other voice. If you're not spending some time with Jesus every day, that's the only way you learn, right? It's the only way you learn the voice of the shepherd. 